Good morning, everyone, and welcome uh, to Juma. And what a great time to join us. We've got a feeding frenzy going on at the moment. The vultures have descended upon this buffalo carcass. One of the males actually just walked off as we got here. He decided he has now had enough of this buffalo carcass. My name is Byron, and on camera with me this morning is Senzo. And surprisingly, we had a bit of rain last night, which is wonderful. Actually, early this morning, we've had some rain, bit of a drizzle. Still very overcast. It looks like it's lifted though, but that really, really is great news for us. But look at this feeding frenzy going on, as I was saying. Well, it's about 18 degrees Celsius, about 65 degrees Fahrenheit, so quite a cool morning. But these vultures rushed to this carcass as that male lion moved off. I don't see any of the other males. I wonder if they all move towards some water. I'm going to probably try catch up to that other male shortly so we can follow him for a little bit. Maybe he takes us to his brothers. Now, I know Scott and James have been going on about the senses this morning and, and I suppose one sense we can rely on here is our sense of smell. And the smells that we're getting this morning are are interesting because because of that rain that we've had, there's that wonderful earthy smell that is in the air at the moment. But where we are now, it's buffalo carcass that we can smell. So not a very pleasant smell at all. Amazing to see how these vultures all pile in to try and get a piece of meat. Whiteback vultures, hooded vultures, that's all I can see for now. But look at them, they are fighting. Look at them fighting over a piece of meat there. This is what these vultures have been waiting for. Oh, Krita, you say it's the cleanup crew. Indeed it is. That carcass will be picked completely clean once these vultures have moved off. Finished with it. As I was saying, this is what they have been patiently waiting for. Oh, is a is that a white-headed vulture? I think off to my right. Um, just let's have a look at this one off to the right, Asenza. I think uh, it was a hooded vulture. There we go. But that one, I think, is the white-headed vulture. No, no, that's also. Also just a large hooded, sorry, it's a large hooded vulture. It looked much bigger than the others, but hang on. Another scavenger. Look, here comes a hyena. The lines have moved off. Wow, <laughs> this is amazing. Now, what I think would have happened is this... Um, this hyena probably would have seen the vultures descending and that would have given it an idea that the lions have moved off. But if you look at that carcass, look how clean those bones have been picked. Olia, you asked if the vultures ever get eaten by, by other um, or by predators. I've never seen it, Olia, I've never seen it. Excuse me a second, I just want to jump on the radio quickly. Good morning. Uh, for this vulture feeding activity at this buffalo carcass and a single hyena, one of the males moved in a northerly direction, I think either towards Galago Pan or to Voyatella Dam. I'm not sure, I've lost visual of him now. Copy that. Sorry, Senza. And here comes another hyena. There we go. So, as I was saying, I think the hyena would have would have seen uh, the vultures descending. Oh wow! <laughs> What's this hyena's chasing the vultures around? But this is very interesting. The one hyena is very curious. 
very careful, wants to have a look where are the lions, wants to make sure there's no threat or danger. Molly, you asked, how do the vultures know where the carcasses are? Well, Molly, you, um, you basically get two types of vultures. Old world vultures. <laughs> Look at that in a go. Old world vultures and new world vultures. Um, now, the old world vultures are these types of vultures. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> The, um, the old world vultures rely on their eyesight, um, so they would see these carcasses, they would have seen the lions, and remember, this buffalo carcass was right out in the open in the beginning, so they would have seen this buffalo carcass, and what happens is the vultures, their, their eyesight is incredible, and they will be able to spot, um, they'll be able to spot something the size of a A4 piece of paper, probably from about two kilometers away in the air. So with them circling, I mean, the outside, they'd see a buffalo carcass very easily from far away. They would then come down, and as they descend, other vultures further away would see the vultures coming in. That's one of the theories behind the white back vultures having that white marking on the back so they can follow one another two carcasses, they can see each other from long distances away and those vultures will then descend from all over and come in and hopefully try and get some food. So there really is absolutely or just about absolutely nothing left of that carcass. It has fed the lions very well for three days, and now the vultures have got a little bit to feed on, and they probably will feed on some more. Even the hyena are getting a little bit of the carcass. So a lot of animals benefiting from this kill. Like the vultures getting too close to them while they're trying to eat. Nikki, I've never seen a vulture feed on so much meat that it can't fly anymore. Um, I've never seen that. I see the two more hyena behind us. So a lot of hyena have moved in that where the carcass was originally, which is about 50 meters away, 50, 60 meters away. And two other hyena. Just back there, you might just see them you know, moving off with scraps. And that's where the original, uh, well, where the kill was originally. And the lions dragged it under this tree. But now the, there's very little left. And watch the hyena still chasing the vultures. <laughs> this is amazing interaction. alarm calling and I'm assuming that those baboons probably see the lions <laughs> which is looks like a younger hyena and I think it's having having a bit of fun actually chasing these vultures wow listen to that hyena crunching that carcass breaking those bones 
watch those powerful jaws going to work. Ali, you asked why they don't eat that buffalo hide. Well, Ali, that buffalo hide is, is quite tough. Um, and it's, it's basically, I mean, it's leather. So it's not very pleasant, not very pleasant at all for them to feed on. Um, and I think that's mainly why they don't feed on it. They, there's nothing to gain from eating the buffalo hide. So they'll try to get the bone, they'll try to get whatever meat is left. And a lot of, there's a lot of nutrients in the bone. But nothing really in the buffalo hide. They might eat bits and pieces of it, but... Those jaws are so powerful. Wow, I'm dragging this kill. I'm just gonna move forward slightly. So I'm so sorry, I'll just roll forward here. There we go, that's a bit better. Let's see, it looks like there is another hyena that was making its way in this direction. Let's see if it does join. I think it will. those bones crunching. I'm trying to tear some of that sinew that is around the joints. But notice how the hyena constantly look around, just making sure those male lions don't appear again. stick around for a few more minutes and then we'll see if we can find one of those males I'm not sure where they went I'm sure they went to go and drink some water but let's head across to Scott in the Mara and apparently he also has some vultures